Welcome to another informative episode of the AWS Cloud Practitioner Exam Question Series on Exam Tricks and Tips channel. Please like, share and subscribe to get regular updates on new episode releases. Let's get started. Welcome to episode 13 of AWS Cloud Practitioner Exam Question Series. We'll be covering question number 76 to 18 in this episode. So let's get started. Question number 76, which AWS service or resource provides answers to the most frequently asked security related questions that AWS receives from its users. Please read the question. You can pause the video if you like and mark the keywords. Here is my version of keywords. Uh, we need to find out where can we find FAQs for uh, security related questions that AWS receives from its users. So the second part of the sentence is a set of keywords. Now let's uh, go by elimination. The first one, AWS Artifact, uh, we have done this in uh, previous questions. AWS Artifacts is primarily used for providing compliance-related certifications. That's your one-stop shop for providing compliance certificates. If you have an audit going on and you need to supply any certificates related to PCI or any other compliance, that's your place. So that's not a correct uh, answer for this question. So we cross that out. Second one is Amazon Connect. Uh, this is basically AWS's contact center. This is this is cloud-based contact center. That's nothing to do with FAQs and you're not going to get any answers for the questions that you uh, need to have related to security. So that's incorrect as well. So that's gone. Option C, AWS Chatbot. Now this is a more generic tool that can be customized for various purposes, but it wouldn't inherently possess knowledge base of AWS Knowledge Center on security related topics. So AWS Chatbot cannot uh, be the answer for this. So that's gone. Final option here, D, AWS Knowledge Center. Now this appears to be the correct answer. The AWS Knowledge Center is a repository of FAQs, security related documentation, compliance information, case studies, and blog posts. So this is the correct answer. This is an, a complete suite in terms of FAQs from security perspective, and that's the correct answer for this question. Option D, AWS Knowledge Center. That's it on this question. Let's move on to the next one. Question number 77, which tasks are customer responsibilities according to the AWS's shared responsibility model? And you need to choose two answers. Pause the video, go through the options and also identify the correct keyword. Here is uh, my version of the uh, markups. Let's go through option one by one and eliminate the most obvious one and see what's the final answer. But before we start looking into this, uh, any question around AWS shared responsibility model, you need to follow this thumb rule. Security of the cloud is AWS responsibility and security in the cloud is customer responsibility. So let's see which one are obvious wrongs. Now, if you look at option C, option C is around determine which availability zones to use for S3 buckets. This one is definitely nothing to do with customer. You customers even don't know where the availability zones are uh, and what is the logical mapping of a S3 bucket to a physical availability zone. Uh, they have no access to physical data centers and they cannot control this. This falls into uh, security of the cloud part, which is AWS responsibility. So that's ruled out from a customer responsibility perspective. Option C is gone. Let's look at what is an next obvious one that we can eliminate. Now patch or upgrade Amazon DynamoDB, that's option D. Now Amazon DynamoDB is a managed service. If it's managed service, you're not managing the servers, you're not managing anything related to patching or upgrading the database. So that's definitely an AWS responsibility. You as a customer don't need to do this. So that's gone as well. That's the second obvious one that's gone. Option E, it says select an Amazon EC2 instance to run AWS Lambda on. Now we all know AWS Lambda is serverless. There is no mention of servers and if you are using this service, you don't need to worry about where it is running. And this is an absolutely wrong answer. So this option is gone as well. And we are left with option A and B. Let's look at those. Definitely these two are the answers, but we'll, we'll evaluate and make sure that these are the correct answers. So, so let's look at uh, option A, configuration of AWS Security Group Firewall. Now that appears to be a correct answer. Customers are responsible for configuring them to control traffic to and from their instances. This includes defining rules to allow or deny specific ports, protocols, and IP addresses. So option E is a correct answer. So we got our one of our first uh, correct answers. Uh, second one, option B, classify company assets in the AWS cloud. Absolutely, customers are responsible for classifying their data and asset based on the sensitivity and security requirement. AWS has nothing to do with it. This involves identifying sensitive data, defining access controls, and implementing appropriate security measures based on their classification. So AWS has given you infrastructure, but then customers themselves will determine what logically what servers are important for them or their businesses and classify and according to that classification they may would like to probably you know treat test servers slightly differently versus say, production servers staging servers etc etc so that's option b uh, that's a correct answer as well so we got both of our correct answers for this exam tip for this security in the cloud is customer responsibility because security of the cloud is responsibility of aws 
and that's the golden rule here to approach all of the questions around AWS shared responsibility based on this and also uh, understand which ones are managed services and which ones are not. So that's it on this particular question. Let's move on to the next question. Question number 78, which of the following are pillars of the AWS well-architected framework? You have to choose two answers. So here's my version of the markups. Let's uh, go through each option and figure out what are the correct answers, eliminate the wrong answers. We've done a lot of questions on pillars of uh, well-architected framework, so you should be uh, pretty comfortable with this right now. So first option, A, availability. This is closely related to reliability. It's a sub-characteristics of reliability pillar, but it's not a pillar itself. So A, availability is wrong, and obviously while we were discussing it, it is obvious reliability is one of the players, so that's option B. So option A is ruled out. And option B is the correct answer. One of the correct answers for this question, reliability is a pillar. Uh, option C, let's look at scalability. Now, scalability is not a pillar. Uh, it's it's considered as a design principle within some of the pillars, specifically related to performance efficiency and cost optimization, but it's, it's not a pillar in its own right. So option C is also ruled out. Option D, responsive design. This is not included in the six pillars of well-architected framework. It's more relevant for a front-end web development and user experience consideration. So this is an obvious wrong one. So that's gone. And that leaves us with the last option. And you must be definitely familiar with this. Operation excellence is one of the pillars of the framework. I can show you the reference documentation for this from AWS uh, docs. As you can see, uh, one of the two answers that we had, operational excellence and reliability is part of this. And the other four are security, performance efficiency, sustainability, and cost optimization. So that's it on this question. We got our answers. Let's move to the next question. Question number 79, which of the following is a fully managed MySQL compatible database? Please uh, go through the question, mark your keywords. Here's my version. Now it's quite quite simple, but let's, uh, let's go over all of these options one by one. Let's go through the options. Option A, Amazon S3. We know S3 is not a relational database. It's a scalable object storage service. So that's an incorrect option. So we rule that out. Amazon DynamoDB. Now, Amazon DynamoDB is a database, but it's a NoSQL database. It's not a relational database. It's a fully managed NoSQL database. It's a key value paired database. So this is gone as well. We don't need it for this particular question. Third one, Amazon Redshift. Now, Redshift is a fully managed data warehouse service. It is used for large-scale data analytics. It's not a transactional database like MySQL. So Amazon Redshift is also gone. That leaves us with Amazon Aurora. Option D, Amazon Aurora. Aurora is a fully managed database service and is compatible with MySQL and PostgreSQL. So this is our correct answer. Option D is the correct answer for this particular question. Let's uh, go over Amazon Aurora. This is the new service that we have seen. Uh, here's documentation from AWS. As you can see, it's uh, MySQL and PostgreSQL compatible. Uh, you can go over how it works. If you have to go in detail about what Amazon Aurora is, it's a fully managed database service, meaning AWS handles all the tedious tasks of database administration, including provisioning, patching, backup, scaling, hardware failure recovery. This frees up customers to focus on your application and data. It's MySQL compatible, Aurora is compatible with MySQL and PostgreSQL, two of the most popular open source relational databases. This means you can easily migrate your own existing MySQL or PostgreSQL databases to Aurora without making significant code changes. High performance Aurora combines the speed and availability of high-end commercial databases with the simplicity and cost effectiveness of an open source database. It often outperforms MySQL by a significant margin. Scalability, it's highly scalable. Aurora automatically scales up and down based on your application needs. It ensures optimal performance and cost efficiency. Availability, it's highly available. Aurora replicates your data across multiple availability zones within a region, providing a built-in high availability and fault tolerance. Security, Aurora supports encryption at rest and in transit, as well as integration with AWS access and identity management and fine grained access control. So that was a detailed view of Amazon Aurora as a database service. From exam perspective, I think the most uh, important bit you need to know is it's a fully managed relational database, which is compatible with MySQL and PostgreSQL. I think most of the question you will get will be around that. So that's it on this question. Let's move on to the next question. Question number 80, which AWS service supports a hybrid architecture that gives users the ability to extend AWS infrastructure, AWS services, APIs, and tools to data center, co-location of environments or on-premises facilities? Please read the question, go through the options, and mark your keywords. Here's my version. So what this tells us, that what is the service that will help you to extend the AWS infrastructure and have something co-located in on-premises, the specialized service. But let's go over by elimination, assuming that you don't know the service at this point in time. So the first one, which appears to be obviously wrong for me, is AWS uh, Fargate. Now, AWS Fargate, we know, is a serverless compute engine for containers in AWS clouds, but it's not for hybrid architecture. So obviously wrong answer. So we rule that out. Option A, that's the next wrong 
one for me, AWS Snowmobile. Uh, we've done this particular service uh, in past, and I'll go over it again. Uh, AWS sends a truck to your premises where you can copy the data, and then the data, the vehicle moves to AWS data center, and the data is copied uh, into AWS services. But this is not for running workloads on on premises, so that's wrong. So option A is gone as well. Now we left with uh, B and C. Now they appear to be similar kind of services, but if you look at option B, local zones, it extends AWS infrastructure to AWS uh, edge locations for low latency application, but it's not designed for on-premises deployments. So that's gone. And what we left with option C, AWS outputs. And as the name suggests, you know, this is AWS away from AWS. It extends the AWS infrastructure on-premises. It allows you to physically install racks of AWS design hardware in your own data center or co-location facility. These racks are effectively using AWS infrastructure and services to your location, enabling you to run workload on-premises while seamlessly connecting to broader AWS cloud. Now this comes into picture when you have an architecture, but uh, on-premises, you have some infrastructure which you need to extend and scale up. Now, in that case, you have two options. Either you start spinning up of environment and procuring of infrastructure on your side, which could take days and months and probably years, or you use AWS outputs, which you'll be able to spin this up much more faster. You create a mini AWS data center within your data center, and that's this service. Let's look at uh, AWS outputs. So here is the reference documentation about AWS outputs family. It runs AWS infrastructure and services on premises for a truly consistent hybrid experience. Amazing, uh, you know, innovative solution from AWS for a hybrid uh, scenario. We came across AWS local zone as well. This is mainly for latency sensitive applications and you're bringing closer to users, age location, et cetera, but not exactly as Outpost. Outpost is a, quite a big implementation uh, of in involving hybrid uh, infrastructure. Uh, you can go through the video on this page. Uh, you can see there's a video as well. A AWS Snowmobile, this helps you migrate or transport exabyte scale data sets into AWS, in and out of AWS. Uh, I would believe mostly people use it to move it into AWS. And here is a picture from one of the AWS reInvent show when AWS Snowmobile was launched. Now this will give you an idea of what exactly the service is, a truck that's sent uh, to your location. And uh, you can look at the size of the truck, it's quite huge. And this truck has all the hardware needed to store your data. You plug it in or when it comes to your premises. And when you're done, the uh, vehicle goes back to AWS uh, data centers and it copies all the data over. So that's AWS Snowmobile for you. And that's it on this question. And I believe that was the last question in this episode. That brings us to the end of this episode. I will see you in the next episode of the series soon. If you like the content and want to get notified when I release the next episode of the series, then please subscribe to this channel. This is Exam Tricks and Tips. You're watching AWS Cloud Practitioner Series. See you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.